Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving into the core concepts of blacklisting and whitelisting. We will break down what blacklisting and whitelisting actually mean. Let's get started. Let's get started with blacklisting. Blacklisting is a defensive strategy where you block specific entities, like URLs, IP addresses or domains, that are known to be malicious or untrustworthy. Think of it as your no-entry list. Whitelisting, on the other hand, is like a VIP list. Only pre-approved entities get access. If an entity isn't on the list, it's blocked. This ensures only trusted sources can interact with your network or systems. Let's dive into some practical examples of blacklisting. Imagine your university's email system is flooded with spam containing malicious links. By blacklisting those URLs, you prevent any access to them, protecting students from potential phishing attacks. Next, let's say your network detects unusual activity from a particular IP address. By blacklisting that IP, you block all traffic from it, effectively neutralizing the threat. And for domain blacklisting, think about websites known for distributing malware. By blacklisting these domains, you prevent any devices in your network from accessing them. Now let's switch gears and talk about whitelisting. One common use is application whitelisting. Only approved software can run on your systems, blocking any unauthorized or harmful programs. For example, your university might whitelist educational software and block games and other non-essential apps. Email whitelisting. In email whitelisting, you ensure that only emails from trusted senders, like professors and classmates, are allowed. This reduces the risk of phishing and spam emails significantly. Network whitelisting. For network security, you can whitelist specific IP addresses that are allowed to access sensitive data. This ensures that only authorized users, like your IT department, can access critical systems. Pros and cons of blacklisting and whitelisting. Both strategies have their benefits and drawbacks. Let's break them down. Blacklisting is easier to manage for known threats and can be quickly updated. However, it needs constant maintenance to keep up with new threats. The downside is that it can't protect against new unknown threats that aren't yet on the list. Whitelisting provides a higher level of security since only trusted entities are allowed. It's excellent for protecting critical systems. However, it can be time-consuming to set up and manage, and it can cause disruptions if legitimate entities aren't whitelisted promptly. So, how do you apply these concepts in the real world? As a cybersecurity professional, you'll often find yourself configuring firewalls, setting up intrusion detection systems, and managing access controls. Knowing when to use blacklisting or whitelisting can make a huge difference in your security strategy. In conclusion, blacklisting and whitelisting are foundational tools in cybersecurity. By understanding and effectively using these techniques, you can better protect networks and systems from threats. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more cybersecurity tutorials. Thanks for watching.